Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you a really handy feature within SQL Server Studio where you can set your implicit transactions to be on. I'm going to show you a few examples of how they work and why they're so fantastic. Personally, I think you should have these on all the time, especially in a live production environment, because it allows you to check your work prior to that being applied. Um, if there's any mistakes in that, you get the opportunity to roll it back. And I think that's I think that's really, really important. So first off, I think we need to state a couple of things what is a transaction for the purpose of this anything that alters and um, such as these three commands here now here comes the example um, let's check the we're going to check the TBL products table and as you can see it's uh, sales a number of musical products musical instruments um, we don't have any guitar straps so a few guitar straps come in Decide to price them at £14. It's an active product with a product type descript a pro product type ID of three, and we've got 15 of them. So I'm going to insert those into the table. Let's just check they've been applied. As you can see, yeah, ID number 61. Now, let's say for example, a vintage guitar strap comes in. We want to put that into into our price list, into our product list also. So let's insert that, and I suddenly realise I spelt strap incorrectly. The only way around this now is to remove that. So I can show you it. I'll just prove it for proof of concept. I'll prove it's been applied. Here it is, ID number sixty-two. The only way to do that is to remove that here. Um, as you notice, with all these transactions here, these, these as soon as I execute these, these reply. There's no, there's no choice. I don't have anything else, any other options after that. So any mistakes I make are applied straight away. So there's, there's a way around this. Let's go to a new window. Now I'm going to set my implicit Uh -huh. Poor spelling. So let's take the same. Let's take the same example. This will need to be in a new window, by the way, because this ID here, this these transactions have their implicit transactions off. So these ones here, I'm going to set them to on. Exactly the same. Okay. So what I'm going to do now. Let's just comment this out so we don't have to see it every time. I'm going to set my implicit transactions to be on. Now, I'll have to commit that for that to be applied. I can check it here, and it will be there because I'm still within the same transaction. Okay, so I have to commit that. But for the purpose of this, let's just get rid of all guitar strap products from this table. And let's get rid of all vintage guitar straps. Yep, none in there. That's good. As you can see, I'm needing to commit and apply these transactions. So, so here we go. I'm going to show you inserting into TBO products. I'm going to check my value. Is that correct? Have I inserted a guitar strap? ID number 65. That's good. I'm going to commit that transaction. Now I'm going to insert a vintage guitar strap. Let's check my values. Is that correct? No, it's incorrect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that back now. Let's check it again. Is it there? No, it's not there. So what this is doing here, I'm, ins I'm inserting this transaction and this implicit transactions is now asking me, what do you want to do with that transaction? Do you want to commit it or do you want to roll it back? Those are my two options. That's it. If it's correct, I'm going to commit it. If it's wrong, I'm going to roll it back. So 
because I'm only inserting one value here, I've got the option of checking. I can just check that. If I'm inserting a hundred thousand rows, I'm not going to check every one, but you can still tell whether you've inserted those, whether they are correct. But in this case, we can check the guitar strap. Guitar strap is correct. Vintage guitar strap. That's wrong. I'm going to roll that back. So what I'll do? I'm going to do it correctly. Insert it. Let's check it. That's correct. I'm going to commit that. So let's say I want to delete that vintage guitar strap. But let's say I accidentally forget to put a wear clause on it. Now, ordinarily, this here will remove one row, as we can see. But let's say I forget to put that wear clause on. And I've deleted, I've deleted 53 rows. I've deleted everything. Every single one of our products has gone. It's gone. I've got an opportunity to roll that back now. And I can go and check those products again. And they're there. So this is the power and this is the safety net that Implicit Transactions allows us. However, there is something to be cautious of if i was to insert another if i was to insert a value and let's say i just leave that now i assume that's committed it hasn't but let's say i can i'm still in the same transaction here so i can do this i, I, I can query anything here but let's say i start a new transaction which is a new window so i've got a new window see see it's number 56 that's my id i was doing this is number 54, so it's a brand new ID, it's a brand new transaction as far as SQL Server is concerned. Now let's say I just want to select those same products. So if you see down here, it's still executing. It won't allow me to view that because what's happened is someone else, or myself in this case, this number 56, has still held everything in TBL products while it's inserting. And it's, so it's locked, it's called a transactional lock. So I can't, it won't show me that until I either commit or roll this back. So you have to be mindful of that if you had your implicit transactions on. So I can just roll this back. And as soon as I roll that back, this transaction will finish. There you go. And in case you're wondering, can the opposite transaction of this, it's quite obvious. off so I can do that and now I don't need I don't need to commit that there you go so it's still there you see the new transaction is there now for my favorite part this is what I do when I'm working in a live production environment at home it's not too important because if you make a mistake it's your own fault and you can just go and correct that however if you're at work and you make a huge mistake, like the example I showed you earlier where you delete everything from a table, that's pretty severe. So I set this on all the time. So to do that, I go to Tools, go to Options, go to the Query Execution tab, SQL Server tab, ANSI, Set Implicit Transactions all the time. So OK that. So now let's get this same, same little example here. Any transaction I do now still has to be, see, it's still locked. I still have to commit these. And I haven't needed to set this. So all that little checkbox does, essentially, it just has this on all the time. So that, I strongly advise if you if you're in the workplace have that on all the time, but be mindful of whatever you do, you have to commit or roll back your transactions once you finish with them. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope this has been helpful and I'll hopefully see you all soon.